at seven minutes, don't hesitate to use maybe even three or three and a half minutes on setting out the debate theory, or maybe three and a half is, is too long, let's say three minutes, really invest that time, and also the judges will notice this, and then if the debate becomes messy, it's not your fault because you did your job. And then the rest of the, if you, if you manage to do it two years, yeah? and we'll talk about the stations later on the as I've mentioned. And then basically the second half of the speech could be devoted to build up of the arguments and also the outline, general outline of the case of the first government. It's very important that, it applies to all teams, that you speak up clearly, that you are easy to follow clarities, paramount of this style. And then your second speaker then, of the first government has more time in his or her speech to develop the arguments. I would say it's a loss of time if the second first government speaker has to go back to, let's say, huge clarification of the setting of the debate. Yeah? Bits and pieces could be clarified, of course there are some misunderstandings, but it's really a loss of time and you are losing out because your team doesn't look that strong if you have in your second speech have to go and rebuild, restate, redefine the debate again. Yeah? Um, moving on, on to the first opposition. So how would you again like, briefly define the role of the first opposition or what is required or necessary for the first opposition to do to win the debate? What would you say? It could be anyone, yeah? you can maybe have ideas, although you are not, you have not been debating this format for four years, yeah? Reputation, model picks, and then Sorry, model, what was the second one? Model pick, if their model yeah. is really bad, and then... Okay, points. yes, yes. <laughs> And you said reputation, one bit big, and points. And point. What do you mean? Okay, some sort of constructives. Yes. Definitely. As as opposing party, you have to refute. So you have to show mistakes, the very shortcomings of the arguments of the government. Also, if there are any problems with mode or definition, you can point it out, but we will again devote some time when we talk, then we will be talking more about definitions later on. But what I think is a very strong let's say, weapon for the first opposition is to have a strong constructive case as well. Because refutation on its own is not usually sufficient. So you have to build a case, let's say, of two points on your first speaker and one point or argument on your second speaker to go against the motion. And you can basically prepare this beforehand because you are preparing your constructive case against the motion, to negate the motion, not necessarily in reaction to what the first government says, because your rebuttal is supposed to destroy, to attack, to undermine the arguments of the first government. Is that clear? Can you follow? Are there any questions? Yes. So I think that this is quite maybe straightforward. I'm not sure, because you are at different levels, I'm not sure whether, you know, whether you can follow or maybe I'm just boring you with this stuff. Okay. So, let's move to the second table, because now it gets much more, let's say, interesting and maybe for some people messy. Because what is a huge dispute and huge discussion at every DP competition is actually what the second government is supposed to do. Because the second government is supposed to bring the so-called extension. You can imagine if you compare, let's say, BP to either the world style, that in world style you have got like one proposition with their line, with their case, that is being advanced through those three speeches and then some up. And the same with the side of opposition. But now, in BP, you have got like two governments. So you have the first government bringing up a case. And now the question is what actually the second government should do, or is expected to do, and how to win the debate on, on the second government. Like, I personally like the second government most in the debate, and I won not maybe all of the competitions that I managed to, that I was lucky enough to win, but most of them from this position. And usually, it's, it, it requires a deep understanding to what actually the second government is supposed to do. So, any ideas on... Yes? The second government needs to bring like, a new perspective to yes. the debate that's equally central. Or more, more central. <laughs> yes, if you can. yes. That's very nice. Yes. You have to definitely bring something new. It's new perspective or new level in the debate, yeah? which are basically synonyms, it's just to give you like more ideas by this description. It could be, or usually how the debate is extended on the second government is that you think about different stakeholders that are affected by the motion but have not been mentioned on the first table, 
right? So for example, if you have a motion, I don't know, that this house would ban violent computer games, the first table, that means the first government, the first opposition, could be talking about, I don't know, computer game producers, children, teachers, and so on, but no one would be talking about society, let's say. So on the second government, what you can do is you can bring in a huge argument about the effect of banning violent computer games on the society. Or no one, for example, have been speaking on the first table about principles. Yes? Can we actually do this? Can we actually like, make this decision for the children or for their parents? So you can talk about principles, which is not only a new level, let's say, but also like a new perspective to the debate. So basically, it's, as you can see, it's very abstract what this extension could be. Yes? So it gives you a huge space to invent your extension. But it has to be something big, something gross, something that really makes your team as the second government like to stand out from the debate. Usually, uh, it can't be just that you take something that has been said and you just add tiny details. Let's say some examples or bits of analysis. It really has to be something new and like consistent altogether. Yeah. By that I mean it has to be the new perspective, the new level. It can't be like you know adding. I don't know, 10 examples to 10 different points that we mentioned on the first level, yes? And now we are getting to the second opposition. And any idea what second opposition should do? Yeah, yes. One more question about the yes. Yeah. So you're saying you can yeah. actually deepen the arguments brought by first half, only you yes. have to do it extensively enough. It has to be extensively enough. Yes. Yeah? So for example, they can mention, getting back to that example of violent computer games, if someone just mentions yes, and what about the effect on the society on the first paper, and they don't develop the argument, so although it has been said, you can just take it up and develop it properly as an argument, like spending, I don't know, two to three minutes on it in your speech. Like on the extension, you should usually speak, to, sorry, spend two to three minutes, two and a half minutes from your speech as the first speaker of the second government. It really has to be something that is taken up. You don't have to label it as an extension. I think the nicest extension is actually an extension that everybody can tell, yes, this is extension, this is something new without actually labeling it as this is our extension, start writing down judges. Yeah? Then, of course, what is, what is also required from second government is to do like a summary speech on their second speaker, but we will get to that later on when we will be talking about specific speeches and the content in these speeches. Now to the second opposition as a team. Yes. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, so yeah. You said two and a half minutes to three minutes for the extension yeah. period. So you expect four to yeah, four and a half minutes yeah, of the speech to be spent on <laughs> the the So basically, you have got you have got some outline, right, in this in this speech. I mean, the first speaker of the second government. Then you have to definitely sort of like react to what has been said on the first table. That means sort of trying to support, if possible, first government, but more, more importantly try to destroy first opposition. Yeah? Yeah. Try to bring like whatever has been said before further, maybe bring up like new rebuttal to the stuff of the first opposition. Sure. Sure. Then you are also supposed to take like two points of information. Yes? So this like, and then like short summary of your speech. So this will take up like four minutes, I think that's, you know, even not enough time like, to do this properly, you know, so I did. But of course I'm just giving you like suggestions or like giving you ideas how to split up your time, you don't have to like copy this, yeah? Yeah, that's just basically what the judges are looking for. Yeah, yeah, the judges, you know, it just is more like time to keep you precisely, whether you have to like your extension is two minutes or three minutes, yeah, your extension has to sound like, you know, um, like solid, you know, just significant, yes, exactly. Um, so now the second closing opposition. That's also a very tricky position, and usually I know the debaters debating BP think second opposition is the easiest position, and then they lose the debate, and they are like surprised. So any ideas why this might happen? Second, yes? Well, because on second opposition you have to have your own extension, but if you don't yes. adequately handle the extension of yes. government, then it stays standing and no one else can deal exactly. with it. Exactly, perfect, yes. That's your major job as the second opposition is to bring out second government. That means to go after their extension, after the new material that they have brought into the debate. That's your first job. And then secondly, you also have to react to whatever else has been said in the debate, yes, in like the usual manner, let's say. 
and then your second speaker or second opposition has to provide a clear summary of the whole debate. But the most important is to react to the second government's extension. What sometimes happens is good, good, <laughs> that, that, that um, it's not clear, for example, what the extension of the second government is, or they maybe forget or fail to bring an extension. In that case, you just have to mention it somehow. Okay? You have to make it clear that like, the second government has been just. And you don't have to do it in that like, rude way, or the way that, they, that, that you say they forgot completely about the extension. You can just say, you know, the first government, the, sorry, the second government has been just drawn into the debate on the first table, and then by this you show that, that basically they haven't done their job by bringing anything new. Yeah? And then you can, by having said this, you can just move on like debating what basically has been said on the first half, uh, because uh, no one brought anything new because the second government failed to do so, yes? So you have to uh, make it clear. So, by having said this, I think what comes out as like the general strategy how to win BP debate on any position is to be in the control of the debate. To be the team which is simply, which appears to be the most powerful, yes? Which, is, which has done everything right, I mean the, the raw requirements of their position, and which managed to basically, for example, the second opposition, which managed clearly to beat uh, the, the, the second government, uh, or on the, on the second government, the team which clearly managed to bring out a new level, completely new level, and extend this new level of argumentation to the debate, and so on. So you have to basically control the debate by fulfilling your role in like the best manner. Yes, so the role is very important and now basically you manage to, to fulfill your role by of course bringing up strong arguments, having good style and so on. Yes, but what is very important is your role. If you forget about your role and you, first, you maybe get carried uh, based on your experience from, from Karl Popper or Mod style, then you might be in serious troubles. Okay, so are there any questions at this point? Also, I just would like to add that uh, what is a very nice tool how to keep control over the debate at different positions are BOIs, yes? Because, as I've already suggested on the first government, basically, you end your... You have the first team, basically, to shut up, yeah? If I put it this way. So the only, the only way how to, how to, anyway, then affect the debate and show the judges that you have involvement in the debate is by POIs. On the other hand, in the second opposition, yes, you actually don't have to be there until the very end of the debate. Again, you have to make yourself visible to the judges that you are affecting the debate by offering POIs. And actually, you can sort of smuggle into your POIs some very important content that you can use later on. And we will talk about this if you have enough time towards the end of this presentation. These are like tips and tricks how to be really smart and how to win a BP debate. So now let's talk more about like the specific roles of the speakers and like the specific speeches in, in the BP format and how to structure these. Where is my idea? Okay, never mind. So let's start with definitions and debate setting. So this is, as we have said, the role of the first speaker of the first government, that means the Prime Minister. So any suggestions on that? Or maybe any experience with that, or any tips, or any dangers, let's say. Something that you would like to avoid. On, uh, now we are talking about definitions, setting up the debate. So any, any comments on that? Any experience, ideas? Yes? Well, you have to avoid setting your debate and a, like that's too narrow that other yes. people have no idea what you're talking about or that you are the only people who could uh, win sure, in the way definitely. that you said it. You so have to make it debatable. You have to make it debatable. So basically all your knowledge about definitions and definition clashes from, from other formats applies to BP as well. Yes, so you, would, you can't squirrel, you can't basically have too narrow definitions or touristic definitions and so on. So I think this should be clear, okay? But I think but, yeah. it's especially in BP because there has to be more than three arguments on each bench. It has to be sure. wide enough that like there can, there is an extension left. Sure, definitely. It has to be there. Has to be the room. Yeah, it has to be debatable. Uh, but there are other other tricks in BP. Uh, like for example, 
How is it with a plan or let's say a model? For example, the motion is that we should invade North Korea. So, what do you think you are required to do as the Prime Minister? Yes. I think the easy way to think about things is that after you set the motion, yes. five things should be clear. Who, what, why, uh, well, why is the argument, but when and where. Exactly. So basically, yeah. who's going to invade, uh, when we're going to invade, what is the invasion force, Yes. stuff like that. I think, I think that's a very good approach. You don't have like, to follow this exactly, the weather, but basically your model or your plan has to be sort of brief. You don't have, you don't have time to bring up a very, like, you know, work up mode or a plan, especially of an invasion of a country, but it has to be brief, but it has to be sufficient um, in a way that everybody, let's say, an average person can get a good idea, a good understanding of what you are trying to do, yes? So it doesn't have to, this is, this is not like a car popper with plan, where you really have to think about each detail because basically you can lose the whole debate because your plan is not you know, sufficiently thought through and opposition you can just point out one mistake and, and you're done. This is not that situation. It has to be brief, it has to have some common sense in it and it has to convey like, the general idea sufficiently on what your position is, what you are trying to achieve. Yeah? So for example, the invasion of North Korea, you have to say who we are, so for example the international community, the UN, Yes, this is enough, you don't have to go into more detail. And then I describe, let's say, the scale of the invasion. Yeah? Do you want maybe just to remove the leadership of the country, of the regime, or do you want to have like a full-scale invasion, or do you want to, I don't know, use nukes even, yes? But you generally should not go into extremes uh, while debating. But sometimes it's fun. So just, <laughs> just give like this general, general idea. And then, as I've mentioned previously, what can happen, and what is acceptable, is that your second speaker on the first government can, like, explain bits and pieces of the plan, which are still unclear. But what should not happen is, like, to have to redefine the debate, yes, re-establish the debate, that's not acceptable. Okay. Then, uh, as far as, yes, Sorry, one thing. Um, so for, for back half government, yes. Um, say government does something really stupid with a model, then yes. actually there's skewed things, we're not going the way they should. Um, and then off is hounding you as yes. back half government yes. on that. What's the proper response to it for, by your And uh, from, from the second government. Yeah, yeah for the second position, government. Yes. Like, you don't want anything but the same Sure. So the best thing, you can't backstop your first government. Yes, they won the elections with you. Yes, they are they are in the coalition with you. Can't go against them, but you are free to ignore them. Yes, they have already really put themselves. Yes, <laughs> so just pretend they are not there. Yeah, so really then, what can actually happen, and why I think second government is actually quite a favorable position is the first opposition, while seeing disaster on the first government side is too overconfident, it's just pointing out obvious mistakes and fails to bring up any like constructive points or really any substantive matter. So you can as then second government show this up. As you can say they were like very nasty on our first government, but actually they haven't said anything. Yes? So we basically start rebutting whatever is reasonable from the first opposition side and then you basically bring your extension and by that you basically return the debate into the correct setting, let's say, or reasonable setting, yes? You should, you are not expected at this time to, like, do the Prime Minister's job. That means, like, to bring a full-scale plan, yes, that you would explain for three minutes and so on, or two minutes, but your extension should be something reasonable, expected, and something which is easy to understand and hear, and we are now getting to more advanced stuff, you have to be prepare to do modifications, right? Because during, during that 15 minutes of your preparation time, you prepare something, but obviously you can't then use this content. You have to, have to be like ready to modify, or maybe then to invent a new content during the debate. This improvisation skill is very, very important. So in this case, in the specific case, you have to modify your extension in a way that let's say it is less advanced, that it's like more basic, but it's like well explained. So basically, by this by this extension, you basically set up the debate on like solid grounds on the government line, right? Because anyway, there is like nothing to extend. So basically, you're just building the debate, right? Otherwise, if, if there was a strong first government, then you have to really come up with a very let's say sophisticated advanced extension. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
no problem. So uh, now we were like at the second, sorry, first, first opposition before. So uh, again, the role of the first speaker on the first opposition is, of course, if there is any problem with the definitions, point it out. Yes, or any problem with the model, obvious problem, point it out. If, if the definitions are too narrow or clearer, yes. Um, sorry to interrupt, but yes. are there points of clarification allowed in this slide? What do you mean by point of clarification? Oh, I don't. I don't even know if like we're from Canada. I don't know if you have that here, but like okay. if you, you mean like POI? No, like if, oh. if the model doesn't make sense, you say clarification and ask them a question about their model, and they have to take okay. you. Okay, I understand. Like in the strict uh, BP rules, there is nothing like that. You can just offer bulk information. And you are not allowed to say anything else. Okay. Okay. Yes. So you basically offer that point of information during the presentation of the model. Yeah? The model. If there are any ambiguities, right? And simply, if they fail to take that point, and then you are the first speaker of the first opposition, you say yes, they presented some model, but they were not even like ready to discuss the model with us because they refused our POI, and this shows that their model is a big mess. Blah blah blah. And then you basically show the indefinite source of their model, right? Uh, sometimes what happens in, you know, let's say, in more fun BP debates is actually that you like, sort of state um, the substance of your point when you are offering POI, so instead of like point, you just say purification or, you know, like you are crazy or something like that, yes? <laughs> and you offer the point with that, but this is not allowed in like, you know, strict competition. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure about this one, yeah? whether it's like serious or not, you can maybe ask the judges, yeah. But usually you try, try to make it like serious, yes, not like a fun competition. Um, okay, it's also maybe applies like to hissing, you know, and like, you know, making faces and so on, otherwise you take it, you can either take it seriously or you can just take it as a fun debate. Yes. Okay, uh, so definitely, first first opposition speaker has to make sure that like the date is on firm grounds. If not, he has to say something. He, they, like the first opposition is allowed to like offer uh, or to, to offer like modification to the definition or like bring up new definition if it's explained. But again, uh, the suggestion is be as brief and as clear as possible. Don't spend too much time on this because. BP debates are usually not won on definitions. It's the content that matters. Okay? Generally speaking though, should you just like take the model they give you? Like if it's alright, you it's should not take mess. it. If it's even if it's just like weird but it's clear. If it's weird and clear, you just take it. Yes. You don't have you don't like don't go to definition uh, challenge or definition questions, otherwise it's really necessary. Otherwise it's like obvious squirrel or you know, tourism or like, you know, do road definition. Or like you know a very weird setup. What I also want to mention here is you know um, also what happens at some competitions is that teams usually like first governments come with very weird like um, setup of the motion. Like for example on the debate on, on North Korea, they just say we are like North Korean government. Yes, so we are like in North Korean parliament. But usually at like normal competitions, it does not happen. Like this house means let's say, I don't know, US government, or UK government, or the UN, or any, like, Western liberal democracy government, yes? So something actually, let's say, a body in which you can have something like British parliamentary debate, yeah? In North Korea, you have no debate in the parliament, if they even have parliament or Politburo or whatever, yes? So anyway, default, it's unrealistic. Is there a default yeah. place setting in this tournament? I'm not sure, but... Uh, I wouldn't say so. Like there is usually like nothing like default play setting. Usually, it's either very clear from the motion what the setting is, or if you just say this house will ban, let's say, violent computer games. Yes, getting back to this example, you it can be just like the Czech government or I don't know, Slovak government or U.S. government. Basically, it makes no like difference for the motion if you think about it. Yes. Or if you are talking about like invasion of North Korea, it can be U.S. or it can be U.N. Again, it shouldn't make a big difference to the motion, only like time details, and then you are free to decide whether you want to be like UN or UK, yes, because still it's all US, because still it allows like enough space for the debate, but maybe it's better like to be UN, yeah? because then you can avoid some nasty arguments of like US, assuming like world leader role and so on. Okay, there was, there was a question. Yeah, um, just to clarify, so yeah. would you suggest that? Sorry? Like, would you be suggesting that we do more of it? Uh, like on the first opposition? 
Um. No, I suggest otherwise. It's it's if if you can run it, just go for it. Yes. Otherwise, if if it's like really very weird, or someone just comes up with that idea of being North Korea or some crazy government, then just go against it. Yes, because this is really weird. This should not happen. Or too narrow definitions and so on. Otherwise, don't do it. Uh, I mean like a full-scale attack on the definitions or a model, but if you can see like some inefficiencies in their model, then you can just use it in your rebuttal, yes? You can just point it out and show, yes, they haven't actually thought about this, and thus, you know, this, this has these consequences which are really very bad, blah, blah, blah. So you can basically turn then any, let's say, shortcomings of their model definitions into your rebuttal, then you can maybe even use them in your constructives, yes? And then it looks much better, much stronger, because you are basically coming up with rebuttal or constructives instead of just, you know, just making about definitions. Usually, you know, just use the def definition questions as like necessity, yes? Otherwise, just avoid them, otherwise try to have nice, decent debate. Okay, but it's your right, that's important to know. Um, then, on your, like, second speak of the first government, again, as we have suggested, your role is so like to defend your case and to like fortify it. Yeah? So if you imagine the case of the first government as a fortress, which has which is already built on like solid grounds and has some like defenses, then as your as, as the second speaker of the first government you have to simply defend it, right? To defend it and fortify it, yeah? like make it stronger. <coughs> By that I mean react to the attack or refutation of the speaker of, uh, of, of the first opposition speaker, the first speaker of the first opposition, sorry, then also bring up your own um, constructive to make your case stronger, yeah, one or two points as the second speaker of the first government. Or you can, instead of that, you can just advance the arguments that are actually already there by bringing, I don't know, new levels, new perspectives, new, let's say, evidence or examples that you actually explain like really strong substantive examples. Um, and also, if the first opposition has their substantive case, you have to react to that, you have to rebut it. Yes? So don't forget about it. Yes? Uh, about for the second speaker for yes. the government, I take it that, of course, say the first speaker botches the definitions, the second speaker is allowed to clarify. Definitely. If there is, if there is a definition of clash, it's like in any other debate format, you go and try to win that clash for you, by either like basically defending your definitions and saying that the attack is insane, or by admitting a certain like mistake on your side, like oh you overlooked that, so we accept your definition, but don't waste time on that. That means like you know fixing the problem that you caused, but marginal marginalizing it. You know like showing okay thank you for like pointing that out. Yeah, that's like a good strategy on how to handle this situation as the second speaker of the first government. Okay, and the second speaker of the first opposition should do what in, the, in like general, let's say. I think that it's a very easy position. That basically, you have to no problem. You have to react to what has been already said. So that means if there is a definition clash, you continue into that, or you just can't see the definition clash. You have to react to the whole structure. Of the of the first government case because the whole first government case is already out, so you can attack it as, as a whole. So you can basically try to you know pick up what is like the substance of that case and try to destroy it. And you of course advance your own constructives, yes, either by developing what has been already said by your colleague as the first speaker of the first opposition, or by bringing new. Uh, Points. That's quite clear. But also, what you can do, and maybe get extra points for that, is to offer a mini short summary of what has happened on the first half of the table. Yes, and usually, like this, really is also a strong way, maybe, how to how to actually structure your speech as the second speaker of the first opposition by basically building your rebuttal and your advancement of your constructives into a structured, basically offers a sort of like summary or follows basically structure of your speech like follows the structure of the most crucial points on the first paper. Yes? So you are very clear we basically we basically show then that we had the control. Yeah we as the first opposition had the control 
over the first table, right? This is maybe something that, that, that is a slight advantage of the first opposition because actually first government there is no room for doing that and also like still after the second speaker of the first government there is still the second speaker of the first opposition so it doesn't make much sense to like bring up any like sort of summary or try to act slightly as a summary speaker but you can do this, yeah? this like slight you know summary speaker let's say uh, attitude approach can be used as the second speaker of the first opposition. And then we get again to the second half. So I think we already pretty much discussed it. So firstly, as the first speaker of the second government, you can either start with your extension or you can start with a reaction to what has been said on the first table, right? And again here you sort of assume a summary speaker attitude. You can't you don't have time to go through each detail, each example, each argument, you have to just pick up like the major one, two or three questions on the first table and to show why government simply prevails in these questions. And the best thing to do is to basically bring up new uh, stuff here as well. Yes? So that means you can either advance a sort of like case from the first government or you can like start defending this first government's case by like new points, new sort of uh, reactions. Yes, these are not like arguments as such. You basically build your arguments in your extension. These are really like points or reactions because you are trying just to show that basically the first opposition failed to destroy the government's why. Yes, if I'm using the term government lie, means basically the case of the first government which is being defended and extended by the second government, right? So basically, you basically fight for this. You can, of course, so I. Uh, this is this is like the, the optimal approach, I would say. Yeah? But sometimes it's very difficult to think up like an extension and then like new ways how to defend the first government's case. So you can just basically try to repackage. Uh, like the first government's reactions or points into like a you know better way yeah to make it more clear more structured and try to resell it to the judges and by this basically defend uh, the government's line right and then your extension must come and I think we already discussed extension if there are any any questions we can just uh, talk about extension later on because this is this quite sometimes complicated because you get like a good idea about extension is after I don't know what at least 10 or 15 debates in this style. And then uh, we are getting to like the second opposition. And again, as the first speaker of the second opposition, apart from destroying the extension, you also have to like provide a let's say summary or overview of the debate on the first half of the table, but from the opposition perspective. Yes. So now defending the opposition line. That means either try to focus on defending of of like the first opposition constructives, but this is not. I would say that's strong because you want to show yourself as a very inventive team or a speaker and by just restating or defending what they have said as their constructives does not actually help you in many situations. So you can rather bring up like new ways how to refute what the first government has said, right? And then you basically attack the second government. You can of course attack like their reactions to the first half of the table, but you have to definitely bring down their extension. And then as, as the second speaker, the closing speaker of the whole debate, the second speaker of the second opposition, you really just provide a summary, right? And usually, uh, what is again a good, good strategy here is to sum up the debate in a way that you sort of like overstate the role of your colleague on the team. That means the first speaker of the second opposition. So when you are talking, when you are providing a summary of the whole debate, you basically don't refer so much to what the first opposition has said, but you rather say, as my colleague has restated, or as my colleague has pointed out in his speech, so I'm trying to make your team really visible. So that's also the reason why the first speaker of the second opposition has to also react to what has been said on the first table, because then, when the debate is being summarized by the second speaker of the second opposition, then it really has to be shown that your colleague did like a good job in this, yeah, that he had something to say, something important to add to the debate, like new views, new ways of rebuttal and so on, new ideas. 
Okay, is it like generally clear? Okay, yes. Uh, as second opposition, yeah. do you have to be consistent with first opposition? Yes. Just that's the same okay. as with government. You have to be consistent in a way that you like can't stop them. That means you can't get against them. But again, you are free to ignore them. Sort of. Yeah. No. Okay, but you cannot control it. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, if I'm a member of the opposition, yeah. and I want to make a counter extension. How much time should I uh, dedicate to the rebuttal of their extension? Like, should it be uh, all in one? Like, should I both rebut and um, state my own extension, I or should they be yeah. separate? Yeah, this is this is actually where, where this format gets quite tricky because you have to develop a certain feel for these situations. You simply have to firstly bring down their extension, that means the second government's extension. And if you manage to bring it down by presenting, let's say, your extension, by that I understand something like second opposition constructive points, then you can do it. You are free to do it, right? But you can't sort of like miss their extension and just present some of your like constructives and pretend this is our extension which is supposed to bring their extension down. It has to work. It really has to work. So, and it can be quite difficult to do it today this way. Usually, just you rebut the second government's extension. Yes. Is rebuttal yeah. counted as constructive? Uh, Sorry. Is rebuttal also counted as constructive? Uh, as in, if, for instance, you spend a dollar extension using seven minutes to completely destroy everything on proposition sides. You can still take for instance second place even though you had no real extension. But it is, yeah, you know, the, 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 the line between you know, like sometimes rebuttal and your constructives is not quite clear, you know. Um, what is important really is to be the team which shows control over the debate, it's, it's able to identify the important clashes, the important principles, and it's able to present. Um, then like they're, how to put it, uh, so, so simply is able first they like to be technically good, that means like presentation is clear, easy to follow, and then with this they are able to identify these important clashes and able to bring like, let's say, most substantive, so most like significant content to these clashes, right? And whether it is done by, let's say, rebuttal and constructive, so some mixture of these, it really then does not matter, like what is important is the final goal. But I can't really imagine just having rebuttals, you know, because you have to say something. Else. Because rebuttal, rebuttal is really something short. You know? I really want to bring down their argument or their point by not like really thorough analysis, but by just pointing out some, you know, some nonsense in it. Or you can just crush their arguments by pointing out a fact which is contrary to their argument. No, you know? I get the point. It's pretty much the same understanding we have. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and then your substance is uh, something that you basically develop uh, by your analysis. Okay, yes. Well, but I mean, from every BP debate yes. I've done, right? To win, you have to be the most relevant. Like to win, the team that wins is the team whose in whose constructive material everyone is talking about. So if you don't have yeah. constructive, the judges won't remember you. You can't. Exactly, win. that's perfect. Yeah, you have to be the team that the other teams talk about. Once you are in this position, we are very likely to win the debate. Yes, that's exactly. Right. You basically bring the content which is very crucial. And now it's very difficult for the other teams to bring something else. Yeah, to be like significantly different and still strong, you know. So once basically your arguments are being restated, repeated, repackaged, then you are very likely to win. And you can just then fortify your position by just showing it in the OIs, right? So this relevance, as has been said, that's, that's it. That, that means like being really at the core of those important questions. Okay, uh, now I've got a few ideas, like a few tips, how to, how to, how maybe tricks uh, which you can use in, in, in your speeches, in your POIs and also in your preparation. But before we get to it, are there any, like, you know, questions concerning, like, this basic stuff, that means, like, the roles of the teams, the speakers, okay, you can definitely ask later. So, uh, What is what is very like good thing to do is try to sort of like 
predict what the other teams are likely to say, or especially what the other teams are likely to say to what you are going to say, and try to like build in, let's say, your defenses against it already in your substantives. So to be more concrete, imagine you are like first government and you are trying to build this like case fortress. You can predict what most probable attacks are going to be. And you can already count with these and build sort of defense mechanisms within your case fortress, either in the way how your actually substantives go together with your definitions, or for example, what, or what sort of substantives you are going to present in your first speech, that means Prime Minister's speech, and then in your second speech. Because, although this might seem slightly unfair, but it's something that you can use on the first government, try to set out your case clearly, but you don't have just to like show all your jokers in your like first speech. Yes, it can be your second speaker who actually like nails down like the real, let's say, gravity or significance of your arguments, right? So you can do this on the first government, and by this you can like just, you know, yes? But isn't it important to have the most important <coughs> material out like as soon as possible? It is. You can't, you can't just simply like then turn the debate around, yes, as, as the second speaker of the first government. But what you can do, and you can do this like, I guess, in work style as well, you have to be very clear in like bringing out your definitions, your model, let's say your arguments, but the really like the clever analysis, or let's say like clever impacts, conclusions, you can just bring them later, yes? And you can just use it also as a way of reacting to the first opposition, because people are generally, let's say, lazy, slightly, yes? And if, if the first speaker of the first opposition has a feeling that just, you know, some easy rebuttal is sufficient to bring down the first uh, government case, uh, then basically it's easier than for you, as the second speaker of the first government, now to bring in the cover analysis and then use it to basically almost eliminate, yes, or undermine this attack of the first opposition. Because if you simply like set out your cards clearly, yes, all the clever analysis, everything in, in your first speech, firstly there's not enough time for that to do it properly, secondly you will really like motivate the first speaker of the first opposition strongly to go against it. And you don't want to do it. You don't want to be unfair, you don't want to do like any squares or really hide anything, no. But is there a job? to really try to think about what you are saying and try also to just to be aware of the fact that you can develop your arguments later. So then the job of the first speaker on the first opposition is really not to get like lazy by say just like you know clearly stated out case but not that strong case. It really has to go and like bring out like strong rebuttal, strong uh, opposition constructive and so on, yes? But you, you, it's not your duty as the first government speaker to motivate your opposition to be really hard, yes? You know what I mean, yeah? Sure. Okay. So, uh, but, but, but maybe these are like obvious tricks, I'm not sure. Yeah, but this is, no, it is maybe something that is good to know that it's like still okay within these limits to do this in, in BP. Then, actually I think most tricks you can do on the second government position, because on the second government you basically know what has been said on the first half of the table, you can react to it, and you can be better than them, yeah, if you can. So you know where, let's say, the line is, and you can get above that line very easily. So you don't have to bother yourself if I just thinking, okay, are they going to be good in their second speech, are they going to bring out something very really clever or not, because already they have finished their speeches. And then you have your second opposition in direct control. Yes, because second opposition is standing against you. So you can react to the first speech of, of the second opposition. So this really makes the second government position quite strong. On the other hand, a lot of is, is, ex, ex, sorry, is expected from you on this position. Yes, so you have to be really very inventive. You have to bring out new ways how to react to the debate on the first half of the table, plus you have to bring out your extension. So, and, and plus react to the second opposition, plus to do a good summary of the debate as the closing speaker of the second government. So it's really demanding position, but on the other hand, it has a lot of advantages, right? On the other hand, the second opposition 
seems to be quite easy position as I've said, but there are like hidden dangers, yes? The easy stuff is that basically you have the last world, which is very powerful. Usually people tend, I mean judges, tend to forget, judges are people as well, tend, tend, to forget, tend to forget what has been said before, yeah? They have to rely on their notes, plus what has been said by the first government, first opposition has been restated many times later on. Um, so, having the last word and being really like a very clear speaker and strong speaker makes a huge impact which stays in, in the judge's mind when they start thinking about, about the decision. So this is, this is a big advantage. On the other hand, what is a disadvantage of the second opposition is that again, it's extremely difficult to be inventive. Because a lot of things have, have been already said in the debate, if you want to bring new ways how to react on what has been said, you have to be really inventive. And um, also, people then tend just to end up with like restating what has been already said, and also getting into a huge confusion. Yes, because you're supposed, especially like the closing speaker, that means second speaker of the second position, are supposed to really provide a very clear summary over the most important questions of the debate. Basically, what you're basically like a semi-judge, let's say, yes, in this position. So you are already offering like a perspective. Of what has been important in this debate, like the, you know the fighting grounds and who basically won on these fighting grounds, right? And because there's so much material and because it is difficult in the time pressure to like say what is actually important or what's not, it's really demanding on you to be to be like that clear, like you know, visionary speaker.